Welcome to Lecture Online. Here's another example of how to work with the theorem of Pappus Goldinus to solve a problem like this. In this case, we're trying to find the area of the object that is produced when we take this curve and rotate it about the x-axis. Now, it turns out this is also a semicircular curve, just like the previous example. Semi, or I should say quarter circle, not a semicircle. This is a, just call it circular in shape. It's circular in shape, but it's only a quarter circle, right? It's a quarter circle. The radius is five, let's say five centimeters. The difference here between this and the previous example is that the curve is in a different direction. Now the centroid is going to be found when you draw a 45 degree line in this direction. The centroid will be somewhere over here and the distance from there to there will be equal to two times the radius divided by pi and the distance from there to there will also be 2r divided by pi. But what we're really interested in is we're interested in this distance. This is the y-coordinate of the centroid as you're rotating it about the x-axis. When you do that, you get something that looks like this. You get a cone with curved sides like this. And we're trying to find the surface area of that strange looking cone. The theory says that the area is equal to the length of the curve multiplied times the path length that the centroid takes as you rotate it about the x-axis. So this would be the path length, and the path length would have the shape of a circle. The length of a circle is 2 pi times the radius. In this case, the radius is the y-coordinate of the centroid. 2 pi times the y-coordinate of the centroid. Area equals the length of the curve. It's a quarter of a circle. That means it's a quarter the distance of a whole circle. One quarter the distance 2 pi r of a full circle. We multiply that times 2 pi, but now we have to figure out what the distance of the centroid is or what the y coordinate of the centroid is. It'll be the total distance 5 centimeters, the radius, because this here is the radius of the circle, so r, 5, minus this distance, which is 2 r divided by pi. So this will be r minus 2 r divided by pi. That is the y coordinate of the centroid. Now let's go ahead and work this out. We have divided by 4, we have 2 times 2 in the numerator, that cancels out. And that's about all we can cancel at this point. Let's go ahead and simplify. The area is equal to pi r times pi times r, that would be pi squared r squared minus pi squared times r, let's just write it out. So we get pi times r times pi times 2r divided by pi. It's just better to write it out so we don't miss anything. Then one of these pi's cancels out and we end up with the area is equal to pi squared times r squared minus 2 pi r squared. Now all I have to do is plug in what these numbers are. So the area is equal to pi squared. R was going to be 5 squared minus 2 pi times 5 squared. So area is equal to pi squared times 25 minus 50 times pi. Here's my calculator. So we get pi squared times 25 minus 50 times pi equals equals well let me do that again just to make sure I got that right pi squared times 25 well, let's just write it down this is equal to 246.7 minus 50 times pi minus 157.1 and then we plug equal and that's 89.7 89.7 centimeters squared since the radius was 5 centimeters then the area of that would be 89.7 centimeters squared but that's how we do that the only difficulty here is to try to figure out what y is equal to the y coordinate of the centroid since we know this distance, we need to take the 5 minus this to get this distance, and that would be the radius of the path of the centroid. And that's how that's done.